Okay, so cataloging ethics and reality itself. Um, these are some core values of librarianship, um, and these are some ethics that apply to cataloging and classification, um, and you can look these up on the ALA website. Um, you're all librarians, you should know where, where that is, and you should already be familiar with these core values and ethics. So, um, critical librarianship is a theory which um, seeks to challenge the systems of oppression that are already in place in libraries and library structures, um, and it seeks to empower and um, challenge those structures and change them. So these are the resources you can access. So crit Critical Librarianship, they have a website, um, they have a Twitter, um, CritCat is specifically for um, critical cataloging, they have a Slack chat group, um, CritCat Slack, you can request to join them, you can communicate with other librarians and other catalogers about issues in cataloging and classification. Um, you know, if you want to talk to someone about, let's change this, I feel like this is racist, I feel like this is sexist, we need to change the subject heading, we need to change this classification, this is a space for you to talk about that and collaborate with others um, who feel the same way and who want to work towards change. The Progressive Librarians Guild, this is another great resource. So they um, come from the stance that they recognize that um, libraries are uh, full of injustice, they're oppressive, um, and we need to change that. So they want to um, give voice to the voiceless, they want to call out librarians, um, librarianship, um, the structures in place that are oppressive and wrong and unjust, and they want to advocate for human rights and social, ju social justice. So they're a great resource. Um, they have a website, they have um, uh, open access articles also on their website that you can read. Great resource. These are some articles. Um, I found a couple of one of these, maybe both of them, on the Progressive Librarianship website. Um, they have a journal. So um, we talk a lot about Sandy Berman. He's amazing. He has paved the way for librarians to change the way that we catalog and classify and, and call it into question. So Hope Olson, she um, wrote this article about um, how we can change the Library of Congress and Basically, her, her point is we need to take responsibility. We are, we're, all of us as librarians are responsible for the cataloging and classification system in place. Even if you are, you know, a, a librarian in a small public library, you're still responsible. You need to question, you know, if your library uses the Dewey Decimal System, question that. Question the way that things are categorized and information is organized. Um, and change things. So if, if you're working in an academic library, if you work in a library that uses Library of Congress subject headings, question it. You know, change it. If you see something that's wrong, take action because we're all responsible. Emily Rubinsky. So this article she wrote about teaching cataloging. Um, so her stance is that we cannot change things. The, the, the fundamental limitations of classification systems are just inherent and they're flawed and they're going to be flawed forever. Um, so changing the language and changing the structure is not going to help. So we need to teach future librarians to think critically about the classification systems that we engage with. Um, so if we're just teaching the classification systems and how to catalog and we're saying, you know, this is the way it is, it's unchangeable, it's unmutable, nothing can be done about it, that's wrong and that's perpetuating a system of oppression. Here is one book that um, Native America and the question of genocide. This is a problematic subject heading. So Indians, treatment of instead of Native Americans, Holocaust, Native Americans, genocide. So this is problematic. Um, Michael Dudley, he created this blog called The Decolonized Librarian. Um, he wrote this article called um, Li uh, A Library Question of Genocide. And he believes that this is a form of Holocaust denial, which I 100% agree with. Illegal aliens. So this one, the dreamers, um, dreamers are defined as um, children living in the United States um, under the age of 16. So we're talking about babies to 15 year olds and we're calling them illegal aliens. Eli Wiesel, Holocaust survivor, says no human being is illegal. So let's stop calling them that. And there actually was a group of students from Dartmouth College who fought to have this change to undocumented immigrants and the Library of Congress said no. Um, and then the ALA met about it and discussed it, like how, what are we going to do? How can we change this? Let's keep advocating. We're not going to shut up until this gets changed. So the Library of Congress ch decided to make an announcement for changing this from illegal aliens to non-citizens, which is equally problematic and equally dehumanizing. So, I mean, it's a step, it's a step up maybe, but it's, it's dehumanizing, it's still wrong. Um, and 
Congress, the Republicans of Congress, decided that they were so angry about this change from legal aliens to non-citizens that they were going to try to pass a law to dictate ha what, how and why and when subject headings could be changed. So this still hasn't been changed, so it's still illegal aliens in the system. Okay, Girls Like Us. Um, so this one, this um, Rachel Lloyd is a uh, founder and activist and executive director of um, GEMS, Girls Educational Mentoring Services. She's a survivor of sex trafficking. She started this agency to help girls in New York City who are victim victims of and survivors of sex trafficking. And in this book, she talks about the problems of the language we use to describe child sex trafficking and ex exploitation. And calling it prostitution indicates that the child has a choice or a sense of agency in this. And that is inaccurate. It's flawed. It's wrong. Um, Judge Maria Hernandez in California said no child can be a prostitute. So why are we still using this as a subject heading? It needs to be changed immediately. So how do we change this? Well, the Library of Congress has this form. Um, it's long, it's involved, it's a very intense process, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of, um, you know, it, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of time and resources. So even after all of this, it takes months for them to get back to you and most likely they're going to say no. Um, and we need to continue to fight and we need to continue to write to them, um, write letters, and enter in proposals until things get changed. We can talk to the ALA, we can talk to the Progressive Librarians Guild, we can talk to um, the Crit Cat um, Slack chat group about this. We can continue to advocate and collaborate with our fellow librarians to change this. So moving on to Dewey Decimal. Um, <laughs> Melville Dewey was a, an anti-Semitic. He was a sexual abuser. He um, was actually forced to leave his job because of his anti-Semitism. He was forced to leave the ALA because of his sexual abuse of women. Um, Tessa Kelso, the head librarian of the Los Angeles Public Library at the time, she said Dewey's treatment of women is a vicious type of sexual depravity and criminal in the eyes of the law. So why do we still use his system? It's inherently um, racist, it's inherently sexist, He's um, he obviously has no recognition for religions outside of Christianity. Christianity has nine numbers out of the ten um, in the 200 schedule for religion, 68.5% of the world's other religions, which make up, you know, more religions, um, they, uh, over 4,000 religions are in one number, the 290 schedule. So, um, this is a problem. So how do we change the Dewey Decimal System? Well, I called OCLC. I talked to a woman named Tia. She said, well, you can email them. So I did. I sent an email, but I asked her, you know, what does this process look like? Once I send this email, what happens then? Um, what proof do I need to gather? What resources do I need? What, what's, how, how much, you know, do I need to provide with them? How many titles? What do I need to do? And she said she didn't know and that there wasn't anyone she could transfer me to who could tell me. So I sent an email and I'll let you know um, once I find out what that process looks like. So separate word hypothesis. This is a linguistic hypothesis. Um, explained by a dinosaur, but it, it is a linguistic hypothesis about linguistic relativity and it talks about how language and the words we use influence the way we think about the world. And it it really is indicative of how powerful words are. So linguists are even saying, you know, words and language controls the reality that we live in. Um, these are some untranslatable words, so this is just an example of you know, words that are important to one culture might not have a translation in another culture because the cultures are different. They, they have different values and different things that are important to them. But if you can't communicate that word and you can't communicate that idea, um, you know, you're limited. So changing words or restricting words or um, using particular words, it's really important and it shapes meaning. Um, so I uh, have a link in um, my resources that I gave you guys, that I handed you guys out, so um, if you're interested in learning more about untranslatable words in the sapphire worth hypo hypothesis, you can. Um, words are vital. The language you use is so important, and we basically, as catalogers and classifiers of information, we are shaping reality and the way that the things that we deem important and the things that we deem, you know, how we define certain topics. So. We, what we do is so important, so we need to make sure that we're ethical, we need to make sure that we're abiding by the core values of librarianship, we need to make sure that we are advocating for human rights and social justice within the library system, and not just accept that's the way that it is, because we can change it. So let's be 
progressive catalogers, let's be radical catalogers, let's be critical thinkers about how we catalog and classify, um, and let's engage with this in a democratic, critical, and progressive way. Thank you so much, and uh, have a fantastical day.